Certified Most Accurate Forecast. I'd say today was not the day to hit the pool. I was going to say tomorrow isn't either. Great. So we got to wait a little bit longer till next week, but summer is around the corner. So if you're not really a fan of this cool weather, which honestly it hasn't been so bad. The coolness is nice. The low humidity is nice, right? Mm -hmm. Got a long summer ahead still. Absolutely. So plenty this of time. is just the beginning. That's right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we do get back into the 80s next week, but not so much tomorrow. Hey, those dew points are feeling a lot more comfortable. Lower 50s for dew points. That's generally well, that's like night and day compared to what we had earlier this week with the dew points in the upper 60s, so it's a windows open kind of night. Now, we are mostly dry on Storm Tracker, but you see how it's picking up a little bit of light return, a little light rain down toward Rutland and Springfield. This is not reaching the ground just yet, and we know that because the roads are dry in Rutland as of now, but we still have this big band of rain that's out toward Toronto, and this does come through tomorrow morning and then you see to the north of that little second round of showers that's what comes through tomorrow afternoon and kicks off a round of downpours and a few thunderstorms now we're not expecting severe weather the damaging wind threat is very low but there is a heightened threat for heavy rain and small hail very similar to what we had in some towns on friday and the reason for that is because we've got this pocket of cold air the freezing level in other words where it hits 32 degrees is only about 7,000 feet off the ground which is low for this time of year especially. So any thunderstorm that really is able to take advantage and grow to about 7,000 feet can tap into that cold air. Now we don't have a lot of thunderstorm fuel. It's just a little bit in this yellow shading, but it's just enough oomph to give those thunderstorms a push up into the atmosphere where it's cold enough to produce hail. So you see on uh, tomorrow morning that the rain starts to move in right around sunrise and it sticks with us through mid morning. Now the heaviest rain initially falls in southern Vermont and then we see a window of sunshine. You see right around lunchtime, early afternoon, the sun comes out for a little bit, but that only fuels the development for more showers and storms. And you see by four or five o'clock, the radar starts to fill in again, especially in northern areas. And one or two of these stronger cells, especially over the higher terrain, could produce some hail. So that's what we're looking at for tomorrow afternoon. It's not like every town gets hit with hail, but certainly scattered about out there. You want to keep a close eye to the sky tomorrow afternoon. Now, Monday is a little bit better. It should be drier but we still have a chance for showers and the clouds are really hard to get rid of. You see, it's very overcast for a lot of the region there uh, Monday afternoon and even Tuesday. It may be tough to get rid of the cloud. You see, even through 2 p.m., maybe some breaks of sun, but really takes until the middle of the week to get into that warm weather, the 80s, the sunshine that comes on Wednesday. So tomorrow it's pleasant temperature wise, but not so much when you think about the rain. Remember, it's morning rain, midday sunshine, evening thunderstorms. That's what we've got going for tomorrow. Lingering showers for Monday. It's better on Tuesday, but we'll have to see how fast that sun comes out because that'll have an impact on the high temperatures. But Wednesday and Thursday look very warm regardless. The 80s are back and a couple of chances for storms in there like next Friday. Uh, and toward the end of the 10-day forecast, there's signals that we could get into some real summer-like temperatures. We're going for 90 right now, but it could exceed that, so we'll watch that closely. Amanda?